Repentance is quite out of fashion in today's church, and that's a mystery to me. I mean, we talk a lot about wanting to experience God's love and wanting an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, but what we don't seem to realize is that much of our behavior, our attitudes, morality, and vision for life is detestable to God. I mean, sin separates us from God. Sin melts spiritual intimacy. When we have sin in our life, it harms our relationship with God and it harms our relationship with others. Now, every Christian has at least an entry-level relationship with the creator of the universe. That's breathtaking. You want more? Do you want more? Well, it's time to clean up your life, and Kai Repentance is focused on identifying and removing sin issues. And this is going to be more than just a trite, I'm sorry, or a half-hearted, I won't do with that anymore. Repentance is holistic, and it's going to create some serious relational healing. Hi, boys and girls. You've just entered into Kai Repentance. This is the mother of all the Cairo 90 workouts. And you're going to have to dig deep here, my friends. Some of you might even get exhausted because you're going to be climbing out of your daily routine and up to some serious sanctification and holiness. So get ready for some serious sweat as we build up your spiritual glamour muscles. you got to get some of that going here. You guys ready for some warm-ups, aren't you? Let me tell you something. These routines always got to begin with warm-ups. That can be like prayer and scripture reading, memorization, worship. These are workouts that need the presence of the Holy Spirit. These are spiritual workouts now, and you need Him to be successful in what we're doing here. Now, while these guys are back here warming up, I want to give you an overview of exactly what we're going to be doing here. In Kai Repentance, you see, the understanding of what we're doing is a whole lot easier to do than actually making all of those changes. And we're interested in the changes, not just in some understanding of things. That's what we're going to be doing here. That's what we're going to be facing. And repentance is a core routine of Cairo 90. Now, let me say something here, because I think a lot of people don't really fully appreciate repentance. It's not just, I'm sorry. Repentance means to turn away. It means to head off in a different direction. Repentance is a relational word, and it means that we're going to be turning away from something that's damaging a relationship, something that's hurting someone. Like if you, if you hit someone, repentance is no longer hitting them anymore. The hitting damages a relationship, no longer hitting them, well, that's repentance, and that's what we're doing there. So we're going to start getting the routine. You guys are about done with the warm-ups, right? I know that was short a little bit today, but they're just illustrating the warm-ups again for you guys. I know you know how to do them, and you go through the workout books, and you've got them. We're going to be starting here today with this, what we call the discovery routines. The discovery routines are things where we're going to be listing sins or listing potential sins that we have in our life, and we're going to be going through and we're going to evaluate whether or not they're really a problem in our life. Now, the guys back here are actually going to be working in three different ways to appreciate and understand that. Drew over here is doing a little bit more of what we call a classic approach to looking at our sin issues. The Bible is full of examples of people who have struggled in their relationship with God and the relationship with other people. Drew's doing the same thing right now. Drew's starting to go through the Bible and say, oh, look at it. Ah, lamentation. Oh, man, he's Cairo 90. You're looking at the big ones. Look at There's some serious sins in there he's dealing with. So he's listing those down. He's working on them. He's trying to see if something's going on that's problematic for him. Now, we've got a little different approach that's going on here. This is a different way that we're going to be looking at sin. And this is being illustrated here by just by going through the variety of things that may be causing problems in your life by looking at life in general. So you're looking at stuff like the seven deadly sins, you're looking at stuff like your relationships with people, the workplace, your family, other interactions that you have in your life that are causing harm to other people, and are you potentially sinning somewhere? And so it's looking at life in general. So Dominic's taking a look at all of that together. We got another sort of classic thing going on here with Evan. Evan's looking at not only just the, the life that she may have done with scripture and, and things that she would have done with her life in general, but she's asking God to reveal things to her, for the Spirit of God to reveal things to her. That may be because God impresses on her, you know, as we looked last week at Symphonics. It may also be because people have prophesied to her and told her things that are tr problematic in her life. And so Eva is going through and she is just listing anything that people have told her, anything that, that things have gone on in her life that have been problematic in relationships, any issue that's gone on that may have caused some problems. But that doesn't mean they are sins. I mean, not everything that you're going to be writing down in these routines is a sin. It's just a potential, and you're going to do some evaluation at it, too. Sometimes people tell us things are a sin, and it's a little bit more legalism than anything else. These guys have just finished with it. You guys have finished with that, right? You got your list? We're going to go through and see what you got. What they've done is they've come up with a list over here, and they've been writing down some of the things. Got. Evan's got about three or four down here, but you're going to need to select for this routine. You're going to need to select one sin that you're going to be working on today. Evan, what you got? Anger is the one she's going to be having. You're not having any trouble with that at all, have you? No! Absolutely not. Dominic over here. Dominic's just got a couple that he's working on today. These are the ones he's identified so far. So he's going to pick one of these. It's going to be the signature sin that he's going to be working on. Dominic, which one's that? 
Greed's been an issue. You might want to flip that one around a little bit. There you got it. Andrew over here, he's also been working on his list. Andrew, what's your list look like? Is it good? Let's see. Dude, man, you got some issues going on. You just need to pick one, just one. Just, 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 just Drew, just one, just one. Pride, you'd expect that. I mean, what they've done is they've gone through all the things that they've identified, working with God, working in Scripture, working in all the dimensions that they have that they've been working on so far, and they've identified a signature sin, something that they want to be working with through this routine. Not every sin you've got is a signature sin, but we'll be looking at things that are actually deeply rooted in you. And when you've got deeply rooted sins, you're going to need the power of God to help you out. Now this is where we're going to go into our, what we're going to call our stopping routines, the routines that we're going to have where we're going to be working with God to help to remove the sins from our lives. I know what you guys are thinking out there. You're thinking, oh, i got the sin in my life. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and buy the, the, the self-help book or I'm going to go through the little techniques of trying to help me to overcome the sin. I'm going to do it on my own strength. Now this is kind of like when we try to go off and we're going to try to get rid of our sins just by doing a bunch of push-ups or sit-ups or lifting weights. You guys know what that's like, right? You can do that, right? So, so the thing is, Ev, all you got to do is to get rid of the anger. All you got to do is about 400 sit-ups in a row. And if you can do that, you're going to be successful. Drew, over here, too. All I want to see is you pump that iron about, oh, 6,000 times in a row, and you'll finally get rid of the pride, right? You're going to be able to do that, right? And, and Dom, Dominic, Dominic, you're not struggling here, Dominic. Dominic, you, you struggle like this. This is what sin's really like. It's pushing you down. You can, try, you can try as hard as you want. You're not going to be able to overcome it. That's what sin's like in your life. You can't do it. You need God. This is where you guys need to actually involve God in overcoming sin. It's Jesus Christ that frees us from the power of sin. It's Jesus Christ that helps to lift us out of that bondage. And these guys have got to spend some time in, pri in, in prayer and in working with Christ to help to overcome the sins that they have. And then once they do that, ah, oh, this is where the light starts to shine in their life. We're going to start to bring some serious light into those sins that they've got. Confession is a major significant element of the Cairo 90 Kai repentance routine that we got going on here. There's three different ways that these guys are going to be doing some confession in here. Drew's going to illustrate the first for you guys. Drew's going to sit down and he's going to look at his journal that he's got here and he's going to start doing some confession you may not have done before, but you're simply going to confess to yourself. Now, this is a pretty simple thing you got to do. You just pull out your workbook and you start writing down what is your sin, write it out. Why is it a problem? Why does God not want it in your life? How is it causing issues? So Drew's going to be going through and doing a confession. So it's almost like writing himself a letter as to what's going on. Dominic over here, Dominic's got a different approach that he's taking. Now, I know a lot of times when we go into confession, what we do is we just want to spend some time praying to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. And then we stop. Gosh, we need to be hours before God long periods of time when we're asking God to forgive us, when we're mourning the sin, and when we just ask God for, for healing of that and, and for power to come into our life, what he's doing is he's confessing over and again. He's pleading with God to heal the problems that are going on. He's pleading with God to give him restoration. He's saying he's sorry before God. And every time he does that, he brings a little bit more light into the room. What he's doing is a technique here of just lighting votives. Every time he prays through the prayer, every time he comes before the Lord and prays, he's lighting a different votive. And, and before long, he may have a massive amount of light before him as he's praying through all of this. Eva's doing another kind of classic technique, but the one we kind of get a little squeamish about sometimes. She's confessing her sins to another person. That's what the New Testament tells us to do. Confess your sins one to another. We do that because, again, we're trying to bring light. We're trying to shine some light on these sins. We don't want that darkness to hold the sin back from us. God wants that sin to be out there. He wants us to be working with other people. And if you can't confess with a confidant, if you can't confess with accountability partners, you can't do it with a, um, with a good friend, go to your pastor. Do something. Spend some time confessing that sin that you've got. Now, once you've got the prayer out of the way, once you've got the confession out of the way, we're going to move into a couple of other areas that are going to help you to combat that sin once you're out in the wilderness. You guys know what it's like. When Jesus Christ went out of the wilderness, Satan started to tempt him with sin. Jesus Christ combated him, first of all, with sword fights. I mean, he brought up the scripture. You know, the word of God came out there, and he started to combat Satan with that word of God. If we are out in the world, and we find ourselves being tempted in that particular signature sin, we've got to have our scriptures ready. These guys are going to memorize scripture today that is working specifically with the sins that they've got going on in their life. They're going to spend a lot of time memorizing that scripture to be able to be much more effective in what they do. The second place that they're going to be working out in the wilderness is they've got to know where the boundary areas are. You know, guys, if you've got an alcoholic problem, 
you don't go into the bars. If you've got a lust problem, you don't go to the beaches. You know, you've got to understand where those triggers are and you've got to stay away from them. Let's look at a couple of those here. Dominic, I know you got you got the greed issues and you usually hang around some friends that got some greed problems, right? Oh yeah, they're always talking about the money and I always feel like if I want to fit in, I gotta make more money. So Jesus Christ tells us, if your eye offends you, you gotta pluck it out. This is where you gotta make a lot of hard choices in life and a lot of change starts to happen because you've gotta sacrifice some of the places of your life that you're struggling with some of the, and substitute with some other things. You may have to move away from some of those friends, dude. Ev, I know you got some driving problems, right? Every time that anger starts to come into your life as you're, you're driving down the highway, 66 is a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah, I know. You got to do some. You got to get in some carpool lanes. You got to try to work on that. You got to commute at different times. You got to take some side roads. See, it's just changing some of the patterns of your life, putting yourself into some different boundaries. Drew, over here, I know Drew, you got some problems with with pride, right? What's been some of the issues? Right, too many people, right? I understand, man. So the thing is, the thing is, when you've got when you got all that going on, what do you got to do? Uh, I guess I got to go into smaller places, less crowded. Yeah. The thing is, if, if if being around a large crowd of people is causing problems, maybe you need to find yourself in some smaller venues. C.S. Lewis actually struggled with that a little bit, and he said he actually purposely stayed away from the large crowds because he didn't want pride to be one of those dominating things in his life. These guys are going to go through all of these routines primarily to help them put up boundaries and protection, and to help them to expose the sin. To help them to overcome it. But even once we may have that sin under control, even though the healing process may have happened internally, we still got to work on the relationships that may have been damaged because of that. Sin always damages relationships. Sometimes it's just with God, sometimes it's with God and with people. We got to work on that. Like everything, we start with prayer. These guys will get together. You can pray with other people, you can pray individually. Pray for healing, pray for restoration. God just doesn't heal us physically, He heals also the relationships that are causing the problems too. And after that, you guys become ambassadors of reconciliation. That's exactly what God says that you're going to become. You go out, you may work, you may have to try to fix some of the healing. Remember Zacchaeus, Dominic? Zacchaeus had some greed issues, didn't he? He was cheating some people out of money, right? He went out, what did he do? He paid him back four times. Four times. And sometimes that's some of the healing that you got to do with that. And when we've got all of that healing going on, they no longer have these signs hanging around their neck of the sin. They've got they got transformation going on. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And it happens just about like that. Let me tell you guys, they've got about 100 billion other sins that they've got to be working on. They're going to be going through this routine a lot of times. And so you're probably going to be rolling through this tape a lot of times, too. That's Cairo 90. That's Faith in it Up. We'll see you next time on Cairo 90. Good job, everybody. See you next time. Good job. So far.